So a brief uh, history of babies' hyperthyroidism. This story goes back to 2019, around February, early February. Uh, to be exact, February 20th, oh, I'm sorry, February 7th, 2019. So I was working at a place not far from here. And on my way home, I knew I needed to um, to buy cat food and cat litter. That was it. I had you know my own food and everything else. So I stopped at a local Walmart, picked that up. By the time I was home, um, you know, being in the winter and I'm in New Jersey, um, you know, it's dark already. Um, even being at six thirty, seven o'clock, or whatever it was, and baby has never been outside except for when I found her as a three three week old kitten who was abandoned. And sorry, I'm rambling because I'm off the cuff here. Uh, so I, 42 pounds of scoop away. Yeah, I had to drop it. Yeah, you know, I put it at the door step so I could get the keys out. And um, so I opened the door and baby casually walked out of the apartment. Now, she didn't run. And... Quickly got the, you know, just moved the cat litter and the, and the food inside and grabbed, grabbed a can of tuna or something and also the Temptations bag. And I quickly closed the door because I didn't want Buddy now to act, to try to go outside. Um, he's never tried to go outside. And Baby, like I said, uh, never, never really cared. Um, so it was surprising. So anyway, instead of Chaser... And I live in an apartment complex, so there's there's four units to a building. And um, so anyway, she started walking towards the because I'm in I'm in one of the ladders towards the end, so she started going to the other direction. And um, so I started banging on the can, maybe because figure she's hungry, shaking the bag, and all she's doing is going meow. Meow. And looking at me. Meow. Now I didn't want to try to charge her because I know she's super fast. Um and she started to walk around the side of the building. And where I live with with the apartment uh that I'm in, the back side is pitch black. Uh there are no lights. Uh some people and, and I have some LEDs, but at the time I didn't. But I mean that doesn't show much. Uh, there's a huge courtyard uh, with like, you know, another set of units behind me to the, to my right. And to my left is actually the maintenance building. Uh, so it just had, there was still like remnants of snow and ice on the ground. It was still cold. Um, it was very muddy. And she went towards the back of my patio, which was cool. So I didn't know how to grab her. And like an idiot, I went inside and I found an old crabbing net from when I used to go crabbing. And I thought maybe I could hook her, like hook her by the head and and be able to, you know, because she's small and this crab net was big, maybe push it down and then got her. Well, I missed. I totally whiffed. She started to go towards where the trees are, towards the maintenance building. Now, this is where it gets pitch black. And with her coloring, sure, um, she becomes camouflage, even with that little patch of, you know, the patches of white, especially if she's walking away from me. Um, I, at a last ditch effort, dove and received a face full of mud and ice. I was frantic after that because she took off and now I don't see her. Uh, backstory, I have been in animal rescue for up now 12 years and I've done a lot of trapping and, and trapping uh, neuter release um and especially here I, I i got just in my area the population down uh you know uh there's still a couple that hang out um and get fed so late, late that night i um i tried to find her every morning at like five in the morning i would try to search for her um and then i'd go to work you know, I could barely think about work. Come home, I would do my rounds. And granted, they say 
cats when they go missing house cats they tend to stay local she's definitely not going to be with the ferals they're not going to accept her uh so i was constantly searching uh every single like i said after work before work and then i do around around midnight um i even went underneath you know, there's crawl spaces um and a lot of them are very warm because that's where the duck work is for for the heating units so a lot of the ferals hang out under underneath these units. So I went into a lot of them. Um, and then I, you know, I created a bunch of flyers, uh, put them all around. I contacted, you know, the, the maintenance office, the, the, the main office to make sure it was okay to do so. Um, and it took two weeks maintenance called me they had her on camera i mean it was a very gritty picture you i mean there's no other calicos in this area and i was able to set up some traps i went to set up two traps in that general location which literally is only about a football field away give or take uh from where where i'm at and so i set the one up with really smelly sardines because you know that's going to get their attention and as i was setting up the second trap on the back of my patio you know i have the towel over these traps and um i could see in the distance that it looked like it might be tripped so i started to bring the one trap with me the second trap i mean heading towards where the first trap was and the towel was just above the bottom of the cage where I seen I seen snow tip paws and I'm like I just dropped the other trap and I went running over there and sure enough it was her I could share some pictures um of like after I found her and while she was in the cage in the trap got her home she was all dirty she was oily because where the maintenance is that's where she was hanging out she was uh malnourished it was two weeks to the day, so it was it was February twenty first when I got her. So sorry for the long story. That's her backstory. So you know, the next day I was able to get her into the vet, uh, my my wonderful vet, Doctor Quaz, from um, from Animals Our fr Family in, in English Town, New Jersey. Great place. She really takes care. Her and her staff are amazing. Um, I'll link that as well. And uh, I had a full blood panel done on her. And this is how I found out she was hyperthyroid. Um, and she needed this medicine, uh, methamazole. <laughs> I probably mis mispronounced that. Um, and what I'll get to in the next video is what the symptoms are. And how putting them on either... I do the transdermal, which is a little clicky pen. You pay a little more. Uh, but you swipe the inner ear um, just just on the inner flap. You don't have to go deep and it absorbs through the skin. Uh, the only reason is oh, I'm not paying attention to the, the, the phone here. Um, the only you, you could get it um, via, you know, liquid for, for oral and also pills. Um, I never had success with pilling baby when she's had had uh, sinus infections uh, I've been lucky with using the oral, uh, I mean, the, the liquid, but cats get smart. Like within the first day, you know, they, she comes into the, the kitchen wanting to eat and she knows I have the syringe behind me. Um, so I knew that wasn't going to fly either. So the transdermal is, was for me is worth paying the extra money. Um, and over, over the years, this has extended her life, uh, because it can be fatal. Uh, as it attacks your kidneys, her kidneys, uh, and other organs. And like I said, in the next video, I'll get into more specifics, um, what to look for, some resources. Some of them, you know, make it sound scarier than it is. Uh, but it does it does help extend the life, and it's worth getting getting a blood panel done as they get in the middle age and, and senior year. Like, baby will get her, her um, blood work done, every every three to six months every three to yeah about every three to six months and i think you know, i lucked out and she lucked out uh a couple weeks ago when i brought her in 
that um that her levels were were good because sometimes they fluctuated they've they've either gone too high or they, and then the medicine's got to go higher or it's gone a little bit low where we we realized that we have to decrease the medication so she was right in a sweet spot but anyway i figure i'd give you a little backstory on baby um and the next video that i do and i do want to work on it i do want to get better resources uh online which i can link to everybody and you know just more awareness about hyperthyroidism uh, and um and everything else but i want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this this one's a longer video than usual and um anyway it was a very scary time when she went missing. I was so frantic. Uh, I ended up losing that job. I really was. Uh, truth be told, I didn't like that job. Um, everybody was very, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, combative. Like, you know, I'm in IT um, on, on the quality assurance side. I've been in this field for 20-something years. And you're supposed to be able to talk to, you know, the developers, and the, the developers are off limits, but I mean, there were other issues and that has nothing to do with this video. So I apologize for digressing. Um, but anyway, thank you guys uh, again for, for a thousand subscribers and stay tuned. I'll get a better video on, on the hyperthyroid, but I figure I'd give you how, how I found out that baby was. And if she, if, if she never went missing, if she, if she did not walk out of the apartment that night, I would have never have known and she would not be here today. So I, I am grateful that she actually walked out, you know, and I do keep tabs on buddy, but he's okay. I mean, he's, he's 12. She's, she's going to be 17 in October. And just to end the video, buddy is patiently, he's, he, he's looking down, but he likes to put his head down like this, but I'll just pan it over to buddy. And there he is. Hello, buddy. He's, He's dead tired. <laughs> oh, well, there he is. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Yeah, there's your eyes. All right. Well, anyway, thank you, everyone. Uh, stay tuned. And um, thank you again for everything. I mean, it's, I want to shout some people out. And I don't have the names right right here. And I, I, um, I don't want to miss anybody. But I shall. Thank you again. Take care. Have a, have a great day. And know that you are appreciated. And also like, share, and if you're not subscribed, by all means, take care. And cleaning again.